I am the Reverend Canon Dr. Sarah Rowland Jones, and I am on my way to becoming the Dean of St. David's. What I decided when I discovered, when I was persuaded to accept the appointment to become the Dean of St. David's was that knowing that the heart of St. David's is pilgrimage, that it would make sense for me to begin my time there by in some way arriving as a pilgrim. And so I was reflecting on what does it mean for me to be a pilgrim from the 21st century, somehow walking backwards in time to arrive where David was in Tidewi. I've been walking in, in companionship with the Reverend Dovrig Lloyd, who's a son of this diocese, and currently is the Vicar of Edwin Stewy Sand, which is in, but not of, the parish of St John's at the heart of Cardiff. And so we have a sort of mini cluster, a, a mini ministry area, and we'll work quite closely together. Well, here I am in Llangaethol, outside the church in which Daniel Rowland served. We've driven up from Cardiff to Tregaron, which is where my father's mother's family were from. And although they were Joneses at that point, the middle name then was Rowland, because a few centuries beforehand they were related to Daniel Rowland. I don't know exactly whether I'm his direct descendant or the descendant of his brother but since his father is also buried in this church this is the church of my forebears it says also to the memory of Janet daughter of the Reverend John Rowlands rector of this church so mm. that was his son who was the rector because he was the curate of Llangaethol mm. Daniel Rowland who is a saint in the calendar of the church in Wales but also a great holy man across uh, Christianity in a far wider way in Wales speaks beyond just the Anglican tradition and Sir David himself of course is not owned in any way by the Anglican tradition but is part of that rich Welsh Christian heritage which is so important to so many of us so it's, it's that I'm seeking to discover in myself and in myself in ways that can be shared with others who come journeying in whatever way uh, as pilgrims to arrive at Tidewi, St. David's. Here we are at Llanfewi Brevi. It's um, about five miles further uh, from Llanfewi. So coming back the way we came. To be honest, this is a bit of a cheat part of the pilgrimage because we did this in the car. But it's the nearest David site to where my family has its roots. And I was, I was pondering, just as we were driving over, and Daniel Rowland was a renowned preacher. And this is the place where David came to a great synod, where there was debate on the nature of God and the nature of Jesus Christ as both fully man, fully God, one of us, and yet fully our saviour, reconciling us to God. And so this is the place of his great preaching, so legend has it, where, where he stood on a hanky and the ground rose up under his feet so that everyone could hear him. And the truth of his words, the words that God gave him, carried the day. So may that be so for all of us. Amen. I fod yn o'r chwyr ffyllon a doeth a dyddi'r gelennau, yn drigarog y caniat a fod i ni, gan ddilyn perdeb a'i fechef a'i sêl dros holl y fengel crist, dderbyn gyda gyfd dy wobr newol, trwy esu grist a'i'n harglwydd, a boeth o gyda thi ar y sbryglan o ban rydedd ac y goniant bys bysau. I've just learnt something. Uh, the information inside the church tells me that Daniel Rowland came to an open air meeting in this churchyard, uh, probably to heckle the preacher, Griffith Jones, 
and actually it was here he had his conversion experience that that sense of god gripping him which changed his life his ministry his preaching from that time on so another important part of my pilgrim journey and my learning This is St. David's Church in Henvanu, Old Menevia, uh, literally from the Latin, I suppose. Um, Kriegerwach, who wrote a, a wonderful Life of St. David, but about five centuries after he lived, said that David grew up and had his first monastery at a place called Vetus Rubus, uh, the Old Grove, which is thought to be uh, here in Vanu here. And we know that this church, although this one is a Victorian era, is built on the site of an ancient monastic community. So, our best guess is that we are standing very close to the place where St. David himself had his childhood and indeed founded his first Christian community. Um, it's also as if the window is dedicated. It was originally a monastic site. Mm. Of course, it's all detailed on the boards. Yes. Oh, the full story here. Well, in the Lichgate porch, there's some wonderful information, and actually, what is brilliant is that uh, it links St. David here with San Dewi Brevi, which is where we've come from, and St. David's Cathedral, with which I shall be ending up. But what we're going to do now is set off down the lane here and join the coastal path and walk down to Newquay. to Newquay along the beach and I was fascinated to visit the tiny little church of Llanina St Ina on the promontory. It's dedicated strangely enough to a Saxon king, King Ina, his wife was Ethelberga, uh, late 7th early 8th century. He was on his way to Ireland and he was shipwrecked but he was so well looked after by the people hereabouts that he, he promised he would come back and build a church and indeed he did. So there we are, the faith of God, keeping those in peril on the sea safe, reaches beyond the, the racial differences of the Saxons and the Welsh even back then. The rain stopped pretty soon after we left Envanu and it was lovely walking along the top of the cliffs. I've rarely seen Cardigan Bay so still, yet there was a great haze in the distance you couldn't see where sky, sea all merged together. And I was thinking about how in the ages of the saints, so much of the travel uh, was, by, was by sea, of course, and St. Patrick came to mind. Uh, 18 months ago, I was actually in Ireland, uh, in Dun Down Patrick, where, where he's actually buried, uh, because I'm part of the International Anglican Orthodox Theological Commission. And both St. David and St. Patrick are acknowledged as saints by the Orthodox churches. And I was delighted to read that um, when the church in Wales was disestablished in 1920, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch and Jerusalem all were present at the service in St. David's Cathedral for that event. So that sense of the links of the ancient undivided church have been part of my, my reflections as we've walked today. So we've come a long way down the coastal path, so I admit actually having walked so far earlier today, we did this by car. But we're now outside Holy Cross Church in Munt, again one of the most ancient church sites in Wales, so I'm going in to have a look. I 
truly love this church. I've been here a number of times, and it's no surprise to anyone that it's one of Wales's best loved little churches. Information here if you ever need it, if you're going to visit. Since the time of the saints, there's been a church of some sort here. Holy Cross, the big hill behind, there was probably a large stone cross there. Fifth to the seventh century, perhaps, is when the foundation was. We believe pilgrims came here and came and looked at that, that stone cross. And it may well have been an important site for those who were on their way, making the pilgrimage down to Tidewe, to St. David's itself. Let us pray. As we think of this as an ancient stopping point for pilgrims with the great stone cross on the hill behind. And we pray, Lord, today for all those who are on a journey, particularly those, Lord, who are in a place of transition in their lives. That in their travelling, they will go from the old to the new. That they will find a new path on which you call them to ever greater wholeness of life and abundance of living. Hello, Florida. Today we have walked all the way from Ceredigion on to Pembrokeshire, which sounds amazing, but actually it's a very short hike from Cardigan up to across the river to St Dogmar's Llandidoc. But it was worth stopping in Cardigan because I found this ancient volume. In fact, Dovrig was carrying it because he found it for me. Cathedrals, printed by the Great Western Railway, presumably to encourage you to go travelling. Um, 1924. And if we go through to page 85, there we are. Several several lovely ancient photographs and a whole lot of words about St. David's Cathedral so I know what to look forward to when I get there. So here we are at Llandidoc, uh, St. Dogmiles, about to enter the Abbey and find out a little bit about this saint who, well, that some at least suggest he may or may not have been a cousin of St. David. This is a Norman foundation but built on the site as was well known of an earlier Christian um, community from the 6th century, so at the same time as St. David. Looking in the visitor centre there seems to be contradictory information as to whether it was St. Dethog who gives the name to San, San Didoc, uh, who founded it and St. Dogmar's name was associated later because of the, the connection apparently with St. David or perhaps it was St. Dogmar himself, but what we know is that we're sitting on what has been holy ground for 14 centuries, at least 15. Well, this is interesting. Either there's an error in translation or Didoch, uh, Devog and Dogmile were exactly the same person. <laughs> we all love a good mystery. We know that God knows us better than we know ourselves, but sometimes I think he has a bit of a wicked sense of humour. This morning I felt very much prodded that Dovrig and I should make, make the effort to say morning prayer together. And of course, what did we find? Well, the Old Testament readings from the book of Exodus begins uh, with a reference to the, the congregation journeying by stages, which of course is what we've been up to the last few days. But actually, I think the real reason why I needed to sit down and, and ponder the scriptures was because the New Testament reading came from uh, the letter to the Colossians. And there are a couple of verses in there which have meant a lot to me. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When I was pondering leaving Cape Town five, six years ago, what should I do next? It seemed that in all that time I'd only, only inched my way forward into the very next verse. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. It seemed to me to be saying that whatever I was to do next, that I would become myself more fully through a form of ministry or vocation in which it was my job to talk about the revelation of Christ in his glory. And today it struck me 
that that verse will be fulfilled in an even greater measure. There's that potential, there's that invitation to go to St. David's and ensure that all that we do and are there is about the declaring of Jesus Christ is Lord for the revelation of his glory amongst his people and in the world. So if I've learned anything on this pilgrim journey, if that's it, it'll be more than enough. So thanks be to God for that nudge this morning. And it's a, a further reminder, if ever I need it, that, that when I do feel that, that itchiness, that prompt within myself to go and pray and pick up my Bible, I have to find the time, the place to say yes and get on with it. Ah, Dunani! And then Haver, here we are in Nevin. Uh, yesterday I was pondering St. Patrick, uh, the man of Welsh stock who went to Ireland, and here we're at the church of St. Brunach, at a site where Brunach himself was, the Irishman who came to Wales. It's said he was a friend of St. David, and one of the legends has it that St. David was uh, going from St. David's taking a large stone cross which he intended to, to set up at Llanzewi Brevi but getting as far as this Brunach persuaded him that it was too heavy and too, too arduous a thing to do so why didn't he set up the cross here and isn't that the way that sometimes we do these things that someone makes some action does something which speaks to us of the presence of God in a place or in our lives and that encourages us to follow in their footsteps, literally, to do what they did, so that we too might have that strengthening of faith. For walking to it. Mm. This organ writing is absolutely fascinating. And if I understand it right, it, it comes with Brunach from Ireland. Um, and it speaks to us of the way, of course, that our faith now as then is entirely international that uh, Jesus Christ is King the Lord of all the nations and tribes and languages and peoples. But I'm going to have a look round here, this wonderful ancient church with its massive old yew trees in the grounds and then there's a little pilgrim walk up behind because this was very soon became part of the traditional route of pilgrims coming from this area, walking down to St. David's. Are you coming? Well, this is truly remarkable. It's about half a mile or so outside of Nevin on what was the historic pilgrim route down to St. David's, and it's known as the Pilgrim Cross. I, I hope you can see it carved there into the rock face uh, to mark the route. And beneath it, that niche, Worn smooth, it is said, by the knees of pilgrims. I've been reflecting on the way that it is the cross of Christ that marks the route, and indeed on kneeling, the cross, um, a death of humiliation, I suppose. As I'm walking to St. David's to take on a role of leadership, which can only be done, well, actually, whether it's church or in the world, true leadership needs to follow the example of the servant king who said he came not to be served but to serve and so my prayer is that this too will be a lesson for me as i head for st david's It's the, the mountain of angels just a, a couple of miles south of Nevern where uh, St. Brunach apparently used to come and climb to the top when he felt the need to commune with the angels. I'm not sure how fit I am so I don't know whether I'll make it quite to the top but I'm very conscious of the company of the, of the angels and the whole uh, communion of saints with us as we've been journeying, especially those uh, who are rooted in this part of Wales and even those nearer saints of my own family.
Well, here we are again. I got to the top of Carningley, but then had to go back to Cardiff to, to finish off at St John's, pack up and move all household etc through to St David's. And now at last I've got a bit of time to, to consider again that journey of all that lies ahead of me, what I'm setting out to do. And so I'm picking up again at this old stone called Messeradoth, the measure of a loaf. Supposedly, two connections with St. David's. One is that the sort of rough circle in the middle was the maximum size of a loaf that was allowed in times of famine at his decree to ensure that nobody went without. What perhaps is more certain is that this is part of the marking of the pilgrim route and it's the measure of the loaf because this is where pilgrims broke bread together as they began their final stretch into St. David's. This is San Friad's church, one of the many from 1500 years ago of Derry's land, the outskirts, I suppose, of the area of St. David's own cathedral. I'm very conscious of picking up the pilgrimage. The first few days were the old area where my family has its roots. Now in Pembrokeshire, this is part of Wales, which is more new to me. And it's good to make that final leg of the journey, really in the shadow of St. David's himself. I'm starting today on my own. There's a, a sense of having let go of what came before. And shortly I shall be joined by uh, Canon Lee Richardson, who is uh, the sub-dean of the cathedral. And he and perhaps some others will, will join me on the final leg as we walk into Tilewi itself. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth and the life. Be our way. Go before us and guide us on the pilgrim journey of life. But so that we might live truthful lives, holiness, righteousness and integrity. And be our life, that we might know the abundance of your life welling up within us today and always. Amen. Amen. We often talk of the whole of life as being not just a pilgrimage but a journey. One of the things that we learn to do in that journeying, we often try to make sense of it in terms of, of telling a story, to see a sort of narrative arc. So for me, the telling the, the pilgrim's story Often it's about starting with myself because that's the only place I can to tell my own story and then to tell my story in a way that sees God's story woven through it. But ultimately my desire is to see more fully God's story, the ultimate, the only story of God's creating and redeeming love and to find my part within God's story. Ah, a lovely, beautiful walk this afternoon. It's reminded me that the heart of Christian faith isn't about abstract metaphysical principles. It's about incarnation. It's about God meeting us in the, the fullness of our humanity and our companionship. And we realise that the conversations that we've had along the way, we've learned so much about one another and about life here that we would never have done if we just met for coffee in an office around a business meeting. It's been an absolute joy and something of a sacrament of, of human life. Well, we just turned off the road onto the final stretch, the path that leads down into Tidewi. As I was walking along, it struck me that going on pilgrimage is a bit like a retreat on legs. You start off, you launch yourself, you know you're heading some direction or other, and you're on your way. And then there's that middle section where sometimes it feels like there are loose ends all over the place, and all you can do is let the journey take you, let God take you where he wants to go. And then there comes that sense of pulling it all together and the arrival which is the first step to the life ahead. And it 
seems to be now that we've just been pulling the loose ends together and I'm about to arrive. There's something about arriving with that sense in mind of I guess I guess coming home. Coming home to this place where I'm called to be in the cathedral as Dean and to begin a new chapter in my life and this fresh ministry which comes with such a sense of invitation and promise and gift and delight. <laughs> 